Lynn Adams will never sell her 65 Mustang convertible, but... I've been looking for somebody to will it to. People are always wanting to buy it, and I say, no, I don't sell my children. <laughs> I said, I'm serious, it's my child. <laughs> It has been driven daily for 55 years. It's my car. My girls will put it on eBay. And that's not going to happen to this car. Over a half a million miles put on a 1965 Mustang by the original owner of 55 years and continuously driven too. We met Lynn Adams at the grand opening of the Mustang Owners Museum in Charlotte, North Carolina. Why you bought the car and kept it so long for 510,000 miles? <laughs> okay, I'll try. Um, I wanted a Mustang. Everybody in 65 wanted a Mustang. I wanted a coupe. My husband wanted a convertible. He won. I'm very happy. Um, I kept it because I couldn't afford to trade it in and it became a member of the family. And at the 50th, I finally found out that there was some, it was something other than an old, most old car that I loved. <laughs> Is it sitting out front? Uh-huh. Can we look at it? Yeah. Which one? Convertible. Oh, way across the street, huh? Uh-huh. Lynn's Mustang is a 65 convertible, ivy green metallic with a white top. Ivy green, which I also didn't learn until about 10 years ago. <laughs> My, my husband called it British Racing Green. It's ivy green metallic. The engine under the hood is the original 289 four barrel. Have you ever rebuilt the engine? Three times. I've had it cleaned and painted twice and both times I blew a radiator. And the transmission twice. I don't think it needed it the second time but I didn't dare take a chance. I was leaving for, I think, Pensacola, and I didn't want to take a chance. Inside, she has the pony seats, which is part of the deluxe interior that includes that special wood grain steering wheel. I carpooled seven children to school for I don't know how many years, four in the back, two there, and one on my lap. They put me in jail for that now. <laughs> it has automatic transmission, and those wire wheels came with the car, brand new. I've never changed a thing. It's the way it came. And I'm very happy now, all these years later, because <laughs> I love the pony interior and the wire wheel covers. And so what are your future plans for it? It's got to go somewhere where somebody appreciates it. Yeah, what would that be? I don't know. I've been, I've been just kind of toying with who in the world could I put in my will. <laughs> the car goes to you. <laughs> But I've only been thinking those thoughts about the last year, so I haven't really done anything about it. What about grandkids? Well, typical millennials. They want something that drives itself. Well, you could have that as a stipulation if you'll keep it for the next 50 years. <laughs> um, they've never even been to a car show. Lynn made up this sign that she carries in her trunk and displays at car shows. I've invited them to come to me, come with me when we've done MCA shows at places like St. Augustine and Niagara Falls and, you know, really neat places to go. Mm -hmm. And I've been declined every time. Mm. So, got to find a better home for him. I really think it'd be safer in someone else's hands. <laughs> So the value doesn't matter. The value meant a lot to me when it was T-boned um, a month after the 50th because that's what saved it. Um, the insurance company was USAA, the guy who did it, and they said, oh no, we don't total this. This is a classic. And that meant, you know, my other option would have been to mortgage my house because I would have fixed the car.